Thanks for stopping by. This is Dan Bell of Bell Certified. I wanted to take a moment uh, and show you some of our coursework, give you a little bit of a tour. Uh, Bell Certified, uh, we're in the business of process-based patent law training, certification, and quality manage management for patent prosecution and litigation. Our courses are all process-based courses. They teach how to do things and what they look like so that at the end of the course you have the ability to provide deliverables uh, to a uh, report requesting lawyer. Uh, pr presently teaching this patent analyst training so we'll peek in here. Now this is why I needed to do this on video because the public can't get in here. You need a password. Uh, but I wanted to give you a tour. This is the first course of four courses for a patent analyst certification. This course is on priority law. It's uh, 16, uh, 16 sessions. They're about three to four hours of studying outside of class uh, and taking an assignment and then so this is a typical uh, one of those 16 weeks. It has a video introduction. Uh, it has um, a, a s some reading materials. It has some questions. It often has another video describing difficult concepts. And then it um, it has an assignment recorder, which records. You, you decide what your answers are here as a student, and then you go and you record them here. Um, so let's uh, let's peek at one of these uh, videos. You're hearing me on the mic. You're not hearing the background. So, but if you go to Bell Certified on YouTube, you'll be able to watch any of these videos and have a better idea of how they look and work. Here, I'm talking about a target patent that needs to be invalidated and a prior art reference, uh, and that's the subject of this video. It's sort of an introduction to the meaning of 102A, <coughs> and then. Um, this is a discussion. Uh, well, let's look first at the um, the reading material. The re reading material takes the statute 102A and breaks it down and teaches the student what the terms mean. Uh, these are clickable links. Um, known or used. The language known or used means publicly known or used. Uh, knowledge or use is considered public if it is accessible to the public. Uh, these before the invention thereof by the applicant for patent. The invalidating event, whether knowledge or use in this country, or, or patent or publication in the world, must occur before the invention by applicant. And then it goes on and talks about swearing behind, conception, evidence of conception. Uh, there's more of those artifacts. Um, reasonable diligence, presumed day of invention, all these topics that are relevant to lawyers. Um, so that give you an idea of reading material. There's, I think there's, I think there were eight pages there of reading material and two videos. Uh, that's quite light. Normally, there's there could be t anywhere from say twelve to thirty pages of reading material for each of the weekly courses. Um, let's look at an example of uh, questions. Here you have some true-false questions. Uh, under 102A, if the author, if the author entity of a potential prior art reference is different from the inventive entity of a target patent, then the by others requirement of 102A is not conclusively established. Of course, they would need to have read the materials to be able to answer that. Here's a typical um, uh, multiple choice. <coughs> Assume the following statements and then answer the question. Claim 32 is a process claim filed by Company A on September 3rd, 2007. Process X was independently developed and first used by Company B on June 20th, 2007 to produce products immediately and routinely sold to the public. Claim 32 reads on Process X. Question. Process X does not qualify as 102A prior art to Claim 32 under which of the following additional conditions. So they be, need to be able to find out uh, in these facts uh, a prior invention to this process uh, performed by X on June 20th, 2007.
So as you can see, this is um, this is not uh, this is fairly dense and difficult material. Uh, it's not uh, it doesn't treat the subject lightly. It's it actually makes quite a useful tool out of the uh, the analyst. Now week week one has passed. Uh, this is a course that's presently being trained, so I won't be able to open this because the students can't answer it anymore. If they didn't get the answer, and then they're uh, they can't answer this. But here, this is the present week, just so you can get an idea what the assignment recorder looks like. Uh, it just asks a question. You click true or false, and you hit submit. Or if it's a multiple choice, you just go down and uh, you know you click what what the date is. In this case, that applies. Um, this is a 102 e <coughs> e date question. And it's fairly difficult, as you can see. You can imagine uh, even a lawyer uh, w would take a few minutes to answer this question 14. The reference R is a U.S. patent that issued on August 10, 2009, was filed on April 15, 2005, and contains a subject matter required to invalidate a target patent not shown. R claims priority to an earlier reference E1, which is a U.S. non provisional application. Filed June 3rd, 2003, and abandoned on May 3rd, 2005. E1 claims priority to an <coughs> to an earlier reference E2, which is a U.S. non-provisional application. Filed June 1st, 2001, <coughs> and abandoned on June 10th, 2003. Neither E1 nor E2 ever published, but they did contain the invalidating subject matter. What's the earliest date the invalidating subject matter can be used to invalidate the invention day of a claim? and a target patent under 102E. So, as you can see, this, uh, this, as I said, this there's 16 weeks in this course to understand priority law, and you're going to understand it pretty well, not as well as an attorney would, of course, who's been practicing uh, for a number of years, but it'll, it'll be quite uh, difficult. And then there'll be um, three other courses in this series covering spec maps, claim charts, infringement analysis, and all the deliverables and processes that you would use to create them. And at the end, in uh, each of these courses, each of these 16-week courses has a, a final examination, which is a two to three hour examination with anywhere from uh, about 70 to 100 questions that of, the, of that ilk that you just read that they have to be able to answer. Uh, so when they get certified, it's, it's a fairly serious uh, indication of their ability and knowledge and uh, not to be taken light, lightly. Um, and um, uh, that's a tour of Bell Certified. Uh, thanks for stopping by. If you have any questions, just drop me an email, dan.bell, B-E-L-L, -L, at bellcertified.com. Have a nice day.